This is the PKF Texas Entrepreneur's Playbook. I'm Jen Lemansky, and I'm back again with Chris Hatton, a director on our transaction advisory team, as well as one of our approachable advisors. Chris, welcome back to the playbook. Appreciate it, Jen. So we've talked about quality of earnings, Q of E, a number of times on these videos. And, you know, before a business decides to sell or go through the Q of E process, sell side Q of E process, are there steps that they can take to maximize their value when they're doing this? Uh, there are. And the first one being, I would probably say, investing in your accounting function. And so when I say accounting function, I'm not only talking about, you know, your controller, your CFO, but on the technical side, you know, your, your accounting system. You might have a company business that has gone from, you know, 30 to uh, $300 million. And mm -hmm. those are great, great stories. But your, you know, company bookkeeper who was with you originally you might outgrow them. And so you've got to think about, do I need to be investing in, you know, a true CFO type person? Do they mm -hmm. need additional assistance down below them? Maybe they're, they're, they're technically ready for, you know, to take on new roles, but do they need support then? You, you've always heard this, you know, the, the adage, you know, bad information in equals bad information out. And so yeah. that's what you want to avoid because these are the decisions that are helping you determine the trajectory of your business. Um, so I always say, don't skimp in this. Don't skimp in this area. Um, one area that we've seen uh, grow a lot of, and that we do, you know, actually here at the firm is fractional, uh, sure. whether it's controller or CFO work. And mm -hmm. so, you might not need a full-time CFO, but maybe the fractional route might be something to, to think about. Um, from the technology side of things, um, QuickBooks is great. We have a lot of clients that are on on QuickBooks, but. If you're growing, you need to think about, is it time to invest into that, that next system? Um, we've seen a lot of companies that have not made those investments over the years, and now they're in systems where it's going to be especially painful to migrate to a mm -hmm. more robust system. Um, and not only for you know, your current operations, you want to be able to have disaggregated data to help you make a more informed decision, ho you know, ho hopefully. Right. Um, but then also, you know, as, as, as a transaction comes down the, the pipe, you know, they're going to be asking for a lot of information and you won't be able to slice and dice your information and, and get it. Here all, you go. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. But, you know, again, I mean, we're talking about pre-transaction. So you just want to make sure that you're investing in, in your company, and your business so that you can help it in the here and now, which mm -hmm. is then going to pay dividends down the road. I would say the next one would probably be... Um, the, the budgeting process. Sure. Surprisingly, we still have, you know, some <laughs> clients that, you know, we ask, you know, what, hey, do you have a, you know, budget? Because we want to, you know, see how you did against budget. Um, yeah. And there's still some businesses that don't do that. Um, and it, you know, it, you'd think it'd, it'd be a little surprising because I bet if you go home, they've got a home, you know, they've budget. got a home budget. They've got their home budget <laughs> that, that they live to. Car, mortgage, et cetera. All, yeah. All that, all that kind of stuff. And so we would say get that implemented right away because. You want to see how you're progressing against your goals. If you're having a good year, a bad year, what's, you know, what may have driven a dip in a certain month. Mm -hmm. But then also on a go forward basis, if you're thinking about making some of those capital expenditures, then, you know, you know, this piece of equipment XYZ is going to cost $3 million. Mm -hmm. So how much is that going to drive sales? How much in additional labor could you potentially have to hire? Mm -hmm. And so all those different things are going to help you say, hey, can I afford this piece of equipment? Or we need to buy this piece of equipment, but then also this is what's going to go along with it. You yeah, know? you don't just buy your vacation, you know, <laughs> and say this is what's going to be it. You know that there's going to be the dinners and you know everything else that goes along yeah. with it that, that adds on. So that that can help in that process. And maybe the third point, and I'm not using this to to sell additional work, but would be a financial statement audit. Sure. Um, there is, there's a lot of value that actually comes out from a financial statement audit. Most people think it's just a compliance tool. If nothing else, you know that you're getting your numbers on a gap basis mm -hmm. at least one time per year. Yep. And if you're having a bunch of adjustments that come out because of your audit, a lot of times there's also going to be what we call um, a management communication letter that goes along with that. Mm -hmm. Because if we're posting an adjustment, then maybe somewhere along the way there's an internal control that is either missing or not working. And so then you're gonna have this management uh, communication letter you, that you can use to help shore up your internal controls. Yep. But then also if there's journal entries that are being posted, you can say, hey, is this something 
that is just routinely going to be part of our year in closing process, or is this something that the controller needs to bake into their monthly closing process mm -hmm. so that we have more accurate financial statements throughout the year? Because again, if you're waiting until year end and you're having these huge adjustments, you think you might be doing great, and then all of a sudden you I hate to say you get kicked in the teeth at, at year end because yeah. they weren't booking certain accruals and, and all that. And then, you know, what looked to be a pretty solid year is is still good, but just not as great as it as it could have been. And again, from a transactional side, um, everybody likes having an audited financial statement. So the banks are going to ask for it. The PE firms are going to ask for it. Everybody's going to ask for it. Exactly. And so if, you, if you've got that and then you've been using those other um, intangibles along the way, I think it's going to help set you up for a smoother process going forward. So again, just just capping it at three, I think that those are three mm -hmm. easy ones um, that maybe don't give a lot of uh, a credence to, but I think will pay pay off dearly once once you get a deal done. Perfect. Sounds good. Well, we'll get you back to talk about some more transaction related things. Sound good? We can do that. All right. This has been a Thought Leader production brought to you by PKF Texas, The Entrepreneur's Playbook. For more information about this and other topics, visit pkftexas.com. Tune in next week for another chapter.